Hello, and welcome to American Amnesia. I'm your host, Cliff Turner. And, uh, well, I picked up a new toy today. I got a, this is an M-Audio um, mic for vocals. Uh, and it's, uh, uh, you got the USB port. I can uh, plug it into my, uh, my laptop. And uh, I do have a plug. And also got this nice little pop filter that I'm using here. Just checking out to see how it works with uh, this uh, this uh, microphone, and uh, I'll check out with this one here when I can find a stand that'll that'll work with it. Uh, I uh, well, I'm looking at the bottom of it, you know, you plug in here, and uh, then what? <laughs> uh, I'll figure something, I'm sure, but. Uh, I'm going to guess that this uh, here inside, right, it's, there's a, a little opening or a groove kind of thing here that you can probably place it in, kind of like setting it in a cup or something. And uh, at any rate, I, I'll, I'll uh, experiment around a little bit with it and see how well it does. It's uh, But I've been eyeing that for a little while. I picked it up at the uh, pawn shop over in... Uh, indicator where I do a lot of business and uh, I, I, I probably do some uh, um, recording work with it also I, I am a singer I do uh, do write songs and stuff and uh, and I've been planning to <clears throat> get into more of that with uh, uh, recording on my uh, laptop and stuff and uh, maybe get a tower even just to uh, do better productions so anyway, that that's uh, something there. I, like I said, I got the uh, microphone and the cord, and also got this nice little pop filter. I have another pop filter uh, that's for uh, actually for my uh, uh, stand-up microphone stand. Um, it's it's an attachment to put on there, and uh, I uh, I'll be working with that a lot more too. But I, I I do have some mics that I plug into like the PA system. And, Old shot. I've got uh, some other uh, some other little toys, uh, uh, things like uh, uh, oh goodness, uh, the preamp uh, with the uh, um, was that the AX seven AX twelve I think um, uh, tube uh, uh, tube preamp and. Uh, and and I, I use that with with my uh, my uh, guitar amp as well. Uh, get get some really nice uh, feedback on it. Uh, it's pretty sweet. Uh, so at any rate, uh, I, I I I do have all these other toys that I play with too. Um, so that's 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 a new one. I'm like I said, I've been looking at it for a while, and I've been uh, rather up for testing it out. I plan to get some software to improve my uh, 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 visual and uh, audio uh, performance on on this uh, on this channel as well. Uh, I've been looking into uh, several programs and uh, weighing different prices and things and uh, and trying to get the most cost effective without spending more than I, I can afford. I really can't afford a whole lot. I, I am a, I am an educator, so I I'm not uh, getting rich exactly, but the uh, life can be good. So just kind of a quick look at some of the news today. Uh, just uh, this is the uh, 22nd of uh, of March. Uh, there was a, an attack, a knife attack in uh, London. A fellow. Um, that was originally said they, they said he was Asian um, which is a misleading thing uh, apparently he's more uh, well well I guess the words more Arab uh, that uh, that he was uh, if it technically uh, would be more West Asian than uh, than when, when people say Asian uh, they often picture uh, people from uh, China or Japan or maybe uh, in Indochina or somewhere along that lines. 
And uh, th so that's a very misleading thing. Uh, the press has been doing this for so long, and and it, and it really has not done anybody any good or justice. Uh, I uh, I lived in Turkey for six and a half years, and uh, uh, Muslims. I, I I know hundreds of Muslims. Uh, they were my friends, and they were my neighbors, and uh, and uh, and I loved many of them very dearly. Um, I uh, I was uh, uh, with a girl there for a couple years, and I she and I talked about marriage. You know, I, so you know when it comes to Islam, I'm 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 the last person to be an Islamophobe. I am not afraid, in the least, of Muslims. Um, but I do also recognize uh, that there is an element in Islam, well, well, element within the Muslim community from a certain uh, Islamic uh, theological slash po political stance. It's a combination of the two that is uh, very, uh, very destructive. And to ignore that, I think, is, is irresponsible. Uh, that I, I've been watching the news over here pussyfoot around about that, and it, it's it's utter nonsense. It, it's it's lying to people. the The fact is, is that when I lived in Turkey, the majority of people weren't for uh, going out and uh, doing jihad all over the place. You know, um, they just weren't. Uh, the they're, they're their concept of jihad had become more personalized and internalized for the most part. There were a sizable number of people, though, who did see jihad in, in a, as a personal but violent and, and outwardly directed um, activity to be done to the world. Uh, some of them probably would never actually p take up arms, um, but they would definitely pay others to do so. And th those people were very common in the uh, uh, the Erdogan administration, and they still are. Uh, Erdogan is an Islamicist. Uh, and he uh, is, a, is one that actually, uh, he sure doesn't shy away from violence. Let's put it that way, okay? I just lay right out. I mean, the man, the man's diplomatic. I mean, he uses everything at his disposal. But he, uh, he doesn't make too many bones about using violence at all. He has few reservations on violence. He, in fact, I think he rather likes it. What, what he likes to do is he likes to punk out his opponents. He likes to belittle them. And if they, uh, if they argue back, then, he, then he, he would just as soon take, take up a stronger means of, uh, of harming them. He, dares, he, he belittles people and dares them to fight back. And, and you see that this is a very common thread. Um, Mr. Erdogan comes from a tradition of people in Turkey that, uh, that, are, that are ideologically descended from the Muslim Brotherhood. Very simple. Lay it right out. They are ideologically descended from there. Uh, the form that the Muslim Brotherhood took in different countries... Um, has a lot to do with their expression. Okay, so so when you're looking at the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt, it, it came up against the government. It was suppressed, and it went underground, and it became a, a pretty much a violent uh, secret brotherhood. And then as time went forward. Uh, they they kind of congealed around those ideas and the publications of those ideas, and they they became a, a kind of a secretive uh, 
what would you call it, a third column uh, within the country. The, the, well, well uh, the, they had the Zawahiri and his faction were the ones that murdered, uh, uh, that murdered Sadat. So they, they, that's the form they took there. They were as in Syria, they were suppressed in a, in a quite different way and for a different reason. Uh, their theology wasn't an issue, and neither was their butting up against the government in the same way. I mean, there, there was that conflict with the government, but the government of Syria was Baathist, as opposed to basically a, a, what was originally a military um, um, coup that, that had occurred under, uh, uh, oh, what was his name? Um, Nasser, a long, long, long time ago, and and the Nasserite uh, faction has, had been in control in Egypt for a very long time, whereas in uh, in Syria it was the Baathists. They 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 took control over there. The Baathists were a synthesis of a uh, of a uh, of really left wing and right wing uh, uh, socialism. Uh, you know, basically fascism with its corporatism type um, um, economics uh, together with a, a state corporation type thing uh, with, uh, with, the, uh, with the communists. And it was very secularized, but it was uh, uh, in, in Syria, it was uh, kind of based around the, uh, the Alawite uh, um, a sect and uh, the people of that sect they they were uh, they were the ones that used it as a way of uh, uh, leveraging the country and uh, leveraging uh, the, the the rule politically they balanced out the fact that there were several different religious sects in uh, in Syria whereas uh, you really don't see that so much in Egypt. Uh, Egypt was mostly uh, Sunni, uh, although there w used to be a lot more uh, uh, what they called Fatimids, uh, which are you know related to the uh, Shiite um, <clears throat> sect. But uh, but with uh, with Syria, the Alawites are uh, kind of a uh, an offshoot of the Shi, and uh, so are uh, well. Well, the Druzes are a little bit different. They were more of a, a, a Sunni split off uh, that that uh, was rather secretive. And they they there's certain occultic and uh, Gnostic elements in a Druze uh, belief, and uh, so you had those sects as well as a rather sizable Christian community. Uh, in, actually in uh, both Egypt and in uh, Syria. Whereas in Turkey, the Christians were mostly wiped out and uh, had left um, and earlier on. And actually in the wake of uh, Outer Turks uh, forming of the Republic, mostly uh, uh, Christians had left. There was a, a population exchange in Greece, I believe, and there was also one with Bulgaria. And I think uh, there was a, also a uh, uh, pretty much an exodus of, uh, of, uh, of um, Armenians after Alatur came to power. <clears throat> but at any rate, the, the, the thing is is that the, um, the Muslim Brotherhood uh, has a significant influence in uh, much of the uh, um, Muslim world that uh, deals with uh, the U.S. and uh, whereas uh, with the Shiites uh, in Syria, um, they uh, they've always been uh, an illegal party, uh, partly because of the close relationship that Egypt and uh, Syria once had. Uh, they were, the fact that the two uh, actually formed a, a union called the UAE, um, UAR, uh, the um, United um, 
Arab Republic, I think is what they were calling themselves at one time. And, uh, and during the, the Nasser years, uh, that, that that would uh, go down and uh, they would uh, kind of go in opposite directions with uh, the Shabathist party taking uh, control in, uh, in uh, Syria. Uh, that, that partly uh, partly was accelerated by uh, the um, treaty that, uh, that Carter got Egypt to sign with Sadat and that uh, that was I think uh, kind of the final straw there so uh, the, the Muslim Brotherhood's importance to America policy uh, was really kind of a, a, a rather uh, how would you say it? It, it it's dubious on one hand because uh, uh, the American popula population generally considers it a hostile um, idea or ideology, actually, because that, that is what they promote is a specific uh, Islamist ideology. And specifically because of Zara, Zara, uh, Zara Hiri, who uh, was like the second in command in Al Qaeda under uh, Osama bin Laden, and now he's I guess uh, he's supposedly the top guy, top guy there now, and he's probably the uh, closest to the uh, original founders of uh, of the Brotherhood, which um, you know this this uh, really brings up a lot of questions. I mean. Uh, particularly with Erdogan being uh, the foremost uh, promoter of the doctrine in Turkey, and really the uh, the successor to the earlier uh, uh, parties and and even a couple of regimes that had adopted uh, the doctrine. Uh, the doctrines of the uh, Muslim Brotherhood and um, were, you know, declared illegal and dissolved uh, because of the uh, uh, secularist laws there in Turkey that uh, Erdogan has been slowly dismantling. And, and now they're, at this point, they're, those laws are just, uh, they're, they're totally moot. They're moot points. Uh, if there is any legal uh, formality behind them at this point, I would actually be a little bit surprised. I don't think there's anything left. They've been so gutted that uh, that the laws would be meaningless. He probably has something there to use on his enemies. Uh, you know, if uh, the Sade, the Sadet party over there uh, gets out of hand, he'd probably slap them down without too much problem. Just pull something out of that right there, um, but but uh, but that that was that that's really uh, the thing. Uh, maybe dubious is not the word, but there is a certain irony going on here, because when when we promoted the uh, the Arab Spring, uh, one of the things that happened was that the Muslim Brotherhood took control of Egypt. Uh, with the overthrow of Mubarak, and and I, and I, I've got friends that uh, I've made uh, in Egypt, uh, both that live there, that are, some that are from there, and they're citizens elsewhere. And uh, there's people that I had met while I was in Turkey that were Egyptian, and nice folks. Uh, uh, most most of the uh, most of the people I know. Uh, from the Muslim countries are very fine people um, and uh, it was really really sad the way it had happened but uh, it was a train wreck you could see coming uh, that the uh, changes that uh, were being brought about were not really what the people were wanting the, I think they were hoping that they would moderate uh, after 
so many different factions of people back them, and that was a that was a naive idea. And in fact, Erdogan uh, had a certain amount of rivalry with uh, Morsi, the leader who was put in prison. Um, he had a certain amount of rivalry with him, and uh, and there, there was a certain amount of re resentment also because of uh, some of the actions that uh, Erdogan had taken towards Israel before that um, caused um, our government to reach over to Morsi to uh, mediate with, uh, with Israel to... Uh, uh, well, among other things, uh, calm Hamas down and uh, and allow a peace treaty to go through, and and uh, Erdogan was bypassed in that that deal. Um, so the uh, the dubious nature of that relationship. Is, is paralleled very well by the dubious relationship we have with ISIS as well. One of the reasons that there's so much, uh, well, dubious, it's too a dual. There's this, this uh, equivocation that keeps going on about, uh, about these, these two belief systems, uh, one of which underlies Al-Qaeda, and the other, uh, ISIS, is, a, is an offshoot of a, of, a, of a group that was affiliated with Al-Qaeda. This whole mess, I think, would be probably a better way to put it, um, has all has always been kind of a uh, in a, in, a, in a really sick and twisted relationship with the U.S. and British governments. And on one hand, we're fighting them, and on the other hand, we're backing them. And, and, it, and it's hard to say which one we're doing at any given time and in, in any given place. That, that's, a, that's, a, that's a big problem. Uh, it really is. And uh, when, when it came to... <clears throat> when it came to uh, with the Arab Spring, uh, that's one of the things that I was noticing. Uh, that, that we were backing... We were backing these weird factions in Syria, and we were backing the Muslim Brotherhood in uh, Egypt. We were also backing them in uh, in Turkey, because uh, Erdogan's in in NATO. And then Erdogan gets caught. No, not just caught. I mean, it was just generally known that he was he was moving people back and forth between Libya and Syria, and then he gets caught sending arms and stuff to to uh, to ISIS. He, he got caught red-handed, and not only that. Once the civil war in Syria had gone in, gone into um, seriously hot mode, um, one of the things that Obama kept talking about was those red lines. Well, you know, it, we just can't let uh, let Assad cross those red lines. Well, Erdogan wanted us to to get into the to the struggle really early on. And I, I know that uh, a lot of Republicans would like to say that this was uh, Obama being weak, but uh, but when that gas attack happened, that was done by ISIS. That wasn't done by Assad. That was a they, there was a whitewash done to keep Erdogan from taking the blame on it again. And, and, and he had it done, and he's trying to bring us, America, into the war. 
and to this day, I'm, I think I'm the only one that says it was uh, it was one of the smartest things that Obama did in his whole time in office was keeping us out of that war over a false flag that Turkey did to try to drag us. No, I shouldn't say Turkey. Erdogan did to try to drag us into that conflict. That's what happened. You know, and, and I get all this, this flack from, you know, the Democrats back here. and They're just like, well, Hillary Clinton didn't do any of that. Well, yes, she did. Get real. She let those people die. And there was, those arms were taken from that base. And they were sent to a place called Iskenderun. That's a port in Turkey. And it's a port that goes to... Uh, it goes to Antioch, Antakya. Very ancient place. In the movie uh, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, there's a town that, uh, that, the, that Indiana Jones ships into called Alex, Alexandretta. That's a Skenderin. Antakya was also called Hatai, which is in the story also. That's named after the Hittites, because there were several Neo-Hittite kingdoms that were in that area, including the uh, city of Carchemish, which is uh, very notable in the Bible. And that's also where um, um, Lawrence of Arabia made his name as an archaeologist. And he found all those friezes from the, from, uh, the uh, palace in uh, Carchemish. But he found all those friezes uh, of uh, the story of Gilgamesh. Oh, they're beautiful too. I've seen them. That's where that is. That is the area in which... ISIS is operating. There's a town, uh, what's it called, uh, Rehanla, that uh, was taken over by ISIS. That's where they sell their oil. It's on the border. It's not too far from all this. I didn't go there. I had people tell me I didn't want to go there. No, they were cutting heads off Christians. But I, but I went to the area. I saw those bastards. You know, they'd, they'd come to the city to raise hell. They'd get drunk and chase little boys. <laughs> little boys, little girls. Or just find a prostitute. Yeah, the people there hated them. I saw those guys. So, you know, when, when I have a, everybody tell me not to pay attention to my lying eyes, I'm not going to listen to you. And not only that, when, when it comes to something like this, I'm going to pose every, every step of the way. I'm going to pose what you're saying, because what you're doing is you're lying to people. Hillary Clinton, uh, John Kerry, and Barack Obama made a real mess of the Middle East. And to say otherwise is really to not pay attention to what, what happened. I saw, I saw the, the, the results of what they did. I saw the Syrian... Uh, and, 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 you know, if you lived in Istanbul, you, you, you couldn't help but see the Syrian refugees. I knew a lot of them, personally. A lot of them were my students. I'm, I'm not saying they were bad people. They weren't. Some of them were pro-ISIS, though. I'm going to tell you that straight up. And they, they would unblinkingly look at me and say, well, what's wrong with that? And they'd be appalled to the fact that I was appalled. And others, they lived through it, and they saw what those assholes did. They don't approve, and, 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 and well, they shouldn't. They're, those people have exploited the, the Syrian people in a, in a shameful way. And, and 
the, the, the what do you call them? The, 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 the coyotes. That's what they call them over here, too. Well, well that's what they are. I mean, they, they, they prey on these people. Then they milk them for money. I watched them do it. I watched them sit there and plan how they're going to how they're going to exploit those people for another day on the street. Where they're going to set them. And I'd watch them go back and forth between the, the little kids and the, the parents of the net further down the street and the grandparents even further down. I didn't get as far in the news as I thought I was going to. I, I ended up stalling out on this. But, you know, the thing is, is that... <sighs> There, there are repercussions that come from, from uh, not, not dealing with this issue properly. And, and the idea of just letting people come into our borders uh, without, without checking them is insane. Not, not just stupid. It's insane. There, there's a scrambling here uh, a, 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 that's mentally ill. It's not just... You know, ignorance uh, can be excused, but it can be fixed. This is unfixable because you have you have some something else going on here that's just crazy, and there's no appealing to logic here. And you wonder why I voted for Trump. It wasn't like my first choice, but you know the thing is, is that when you end up with a choice like uh, Hillary Clinton or somebody that might actually do some good, it's obvious my, what I'm going to make my decision. As much of a thief as she was, alone. But what I saw overseas that she had done, there was no way I could put it in my conscience to, to back her to let her do what she did in, over in, in Libya and Syria to the rest of the world. And especially when she made a profit at it. So, you know, at least, at least uh, some people are getting it right. We're, we're identifying what the problem is. If you can identify the problem, at least you can work with it. This is an improvement over Obama. A big time. Big time improvement. And they, the, the, maybe I can get to some other things here. Uh, we're talking about Trump care. And um, that, that's in the news. And, and there's some issues about whether it'll pass or not. And the, I, I don't really find it really that... that uh, in and of itself, a, a driving thing to be done outside of what's already been done. At least the the the, the mandate has been removed. You're not going to get penalized. That's an improvement right there. You know, so when you know you hear all the fear tactics coming from the Democrats, which they're whatever. Whatever. I mean, you're, you're all pissing yourself anyway. I mean, it, you're, you're so afraid of everything moving now. It, it's unbelievable, you know. You know what, change your pants first. It's very unbecoming talking to somebody that has piss stains on the front of their pants. That's what I have to say about that. Now, for those of you that have some thoughts, big improvement. At least people are seeing what's going on. Don't want to see how a sausage is made? Well, yeah, we do. And I think that we're mature enough to actually accept the fact that it happens. So that's not such a big deal. It's in the open. We're hearing what's going to be in it. We don't have to pass the stupid thing to find out what's in it. We're going to find out what's in it because they're going to work on it in front of our eyes. That is what it should have been done in the first place. Shame on you people. What you did was a shame. And now you're going to sit there and you're going to pee yourselves again. I'm not listening. I'm not listening. Pee yourselves and 
then after you after you take your, take your bath and change your pants, come back and talk to us and act a little more mature than you have been. But that is an improvement. Openness. What we were asking for in the first place, what Obama promised and did not do. Then we come to uh, really the third item that I was wanting to get to. Um, the issue of the surveillance of the president. And... Uh, that, you know, he, he called it wiretapping, whatever. It, Trump isn't exactly the best uh, the best communicator on, on, on the level of being uh, accurate. Uh, but he does tend to give you a gist of what he thinks, and he spouts off. I mean, you know, he's what he is. Like I say, he's not the messenger, he's the message. But... I think he's delivering a pretty good and strong message. And actually what he's doing is he is clearing out some of the mess. That's good. That's good. It's, it's a good start. Um, it gives us something to work with. And it, it does provide some substance to a populist vision. And, and you know, people, oh, it's not populism. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. It's rejecting the elite um, arrogance that, that's been running roughshod over the rest of us for, for a long time now. And uh, we haven't seen anything like uh, what, what we're seeing in the years. I mean, LBJ would probably be the last person that was comparably plain spoken. Uh, we'd have to look at Kennedy for the last time we had such an elegant first lady, for one thing. But uh, but also for comparative wealth. I mean, we're looking at somebody from the, the milieu the Kennedys came from. And it really even, we could take it back to FDR. I mean, he's part of that type of upper crust. And he talks to the regular people, just like, El just, just like, just like uh, FDR did. Just like... JFK did, and just like LBJ did, and, and not only that, so did, so did Eisenhower. We we had a scheme of presidents that talked to the regular people. Uh, Nixon didn't didn't like Nixon too much, but you know he did talk to people, and that that even Carter, Reagan, but after Reagan. It's been a totally different game. And the, the, the talking to the common person is, has become somehow scary. I don't, I don't know why. I, it, 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 it really doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. But the surveillance of the president that was done by the Obama administration uh, the what is his name Nunez uh, came right out and said it and Adam Schiff's uh, just furious because he wasn't able to talk him out of it <laughs> well too bad Mr. Schiff the fact is is that we knew the NSA has been spying on every single American every single American for years now and that's that was the whole thing about Snowden that he came out and let us know what the NSA was doing and and you know it's not like when he said it it, it didn't really strike me as something that was all that weird anyway as it was they were they were listening to all our phone calls back in the 70s Good grief, they barely acknowledged the existence of the NSA back then. So, why should we be surprised that, that Obama was listening to everything that, uh, that Trump had to say? Not to mention, even if he didn't 
specifically target Mr. Trump. Are you going to expect us to believe that President Obama didn't know they were listening to him? Are you out of your mind? What, what is this fiction you guys have to hang on to? What is the purpose to this? It, it, it's not even a good lie. It's not even a good lie. It, it, we already know. Everybody knows. And if you don't know, then you should be ashamed of the fact that you don't. This is part of the public domain. This is common knowledge. Common sense just takes the common knowledge and analyzes it and, and actually works with it. You can't you can honestly tell me that you can't work with what everybody already knows? Are you kidding? That's quite apart from anything else, but we do know that something happened. That somebody was listening in and illegally exposing the information they got their hands on when 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 those phone calls with uh, Trump and the uh, the Mexican president the details were released and, and the details were that were released were not given any context people made whatever they wanted out of that and they were t trying to say that Trump was going to send troops into Mexico you know I'm scratching my head over that going where'd that come from and then, then we find out a little more, you know, a couple days later, and it turns out that it, that somebody was releasing some transcripts of, of something that they were listening in on. Now, come on. How stupid do you think we are? I mean, really. You know, you better start taking some of this back because it's an insult. You do realize berating the people does not make them come to your side. That's not an argument. It is not an argument. Stephen Mullen, you know, I love the way he does that. It is not an argument. You're not presenting a logical argument. You're just you're just yelling at us. You're trying. Uh, uh, actually, what that's called is argu argumentum. Um, ad um, uh, baculum. You're beating us with a stick. You're arguing with a stick. You're arguing with a threat. I don't think that's going to work here in the U.S. I don't, I don't think it works in most countries. As a matter of fact, that's a good way to start a rebellion. That, that's why people are overthrowing you people. Keep it up. You'll end up out on your ear. That's what you deserve, especially here in Illinois. Good grief. How long has uh, Mr. Madigan been in control? You're going to blame, you're going to blame the governor Ronner for it? Are you kidding? He's, he's what, three years? Two, two full years in office or whatever? Uh, that just doesn't wash, folks. I'm sorry. You've had decades, 31 years of uh, Mr. Madigan and his uh, his pushing everybody else around, making sure everything kind of comes down into the middle of his little spider web there. Maybe it's time for that to stop. Term limits. Term limits. I think they're coming. Meanwhile, until next time.